Okay, we go now to Traveler's Rest. Sherry is on the line. Hi, Sherry. How are you go doing? <laughs> Hello. Doing great. How are y'all doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Doing great. What's up, Sherry? I had a quick question. Um, I noticed last night on my dog, uh, I have a boxer, and noticed that her eye was a little swollen and pinkish almost. Um, it looked like the eyelid covering was covering her eyeball. Mm -hmm. And I did some looking on the Internet today, <laughs> and I noticed that it could be, it looks like cherry eye and yeah, dog, yeah, possibly. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, and I'll probably end up taking her to the vet this week anyway to get it Good. looked at. But I was just wanting to know what is the, what is exactly cherry eye and treatment for that? Good. Well, if question. it was to yeah. be that, okay. Okay. if it was to be that, the right. the you know what it is is basically that we don't have one, but the third eyelid is what we call it, or nictitating right. membrane, and it's a it's a little mucous membrane that comes up from the medial canthus or the inside corner of the eye, and is where you would see it protrude from, and there's a gland on there um, that you know swells up, and so once it's swollen and inflamed there, then that that protrudes out of the eye. And the, you know, the, the really important thing about that is, is that that is where a majority of our tear function comes from. And, mm -hmm. and so one of the things that happens or used to happen, the, the way to, the quick way, quick and dirty way to fix those was that you just amputated it, you know, cut it off and it's done. You know, it's not going to come back or cause a problem. The downside is, <laughs> is that that cuts out significant amount of tear flow. And that then we're likely creating another problem as far as having a dry eye and, and corneal problems. Right. And so... Really, the best way to treat it is um, to surgically fix it as far as they make a little, they call it marsupialization, where you make a little pocket down inside that eyelid, you tuck that gland back down in there, and then you suture it down in there, so that way we still get the tear flow. If it stays out, you know, there's a lot of dogs who, if that's not an option for the people or something else, then, um, you know, it stays out there. We try some topical antibiotic, anti-inflammatory drops. Most time it's going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do fine with them out there, and it's just mm -hmm. an aesthetic problem. But a lot of times we still end up losing some of that tear function and, and end up with kind of a dry, irritated eye all the time. And right. so, so it is much, much better to get it fixed right. if that's what it is. To have it surgically uh, fixed. Yes, right. yes, ma'am. Correct. Is yep. it contagious to other dogs? No, no. If it's not, you know, if it's a cherry eye, that's not contagious. That's a that's a unique instance to that one dog. Um, and if it happens in one eye. The right. other thing is it very well could happen in the other eye too. Right. So it, it's oh, an ana okay. more of an anatomical yes problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I guess I better get her in the vet. Yes. Yeah. Have it yeah. checked. Well, that. Well, and sure, the other thing is make, make sure it is. And to make sure it is that because yeah. if it's something else to do with the eye, right. those can go bad really fast. Right. So if it's an eye problem, it's always better to check it sooner rather than later. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, doctors. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Sherry. No yep. Uh huh.